Next, I'm joined in studio by Mbijiwe Mwendwa, a security and anti-terrorism expert. Thank you and welcome to Africa Live this evening. Now, what is it that is not working exactly with Kenya's security situation? I mean, there have been instances now of uh, what we would call frequent attacks. Uh, first of all, I am grateful to be here and I, I express my deepest condolences to the families of those that lost their loved ones this evening and pray for the quick healing of those that are in hospital. Uh, I think our situation is not that something is not working, but that something actually worked. We took our troops to Somalia to fix a pestering problem. Our troops did a splendid job. They fixed the problem. They took Kisimayo. They cut the, the economic nerve for the Al-Shabaab. And the Al-Shabaab, having been almost decimated in Somalia, have their cells, one or two people around here who are hiding among our populations, and they run around exploding a few IEDs. And uh, this, for me, are the last kicks of a dying horse. And I think as a nation, we have the determination to do homeland security and fix this problem from within. But I think this is a sign that Al-Shabaab has actually lost this battle. It, it is a sign that Al-Shabaab may have lost the battle and uh, Kenya has won that battle on uh, Somali soil itself. But in terms of the homeland security, in, in terms of the domestic situation, is it time for uh, the local, the domestic security forces to change tack? Yes, absolutely. You see, in war, uh, the enemy changes tact. And that's why every war is guided by something called a war room. Because in the war room, the war technocrats sit down and look at the development of the war and they change tact and strategy and approach every single day. And I think Kenyan authorities need to learn and know that Al-Shabaab is no longer in the bushes of uh, Afmado. They are no longer in the, in the, in the, in the hiding holes around uh, Kisimayo or in the, lakes, in, in, the, in the ocean side of Kisimayo. They are now on the concrete jungle of Nairobi and it's time we, we adjust our tactics quickly because they are here and they mean business and it's time we show them well we did it in Somalia we are good at home. We, we saw the last attack though pr prior to this one of today though we saw another attack uh, at a bus station on a thicker road where local Kenyans frequent and, and, and today's is a, a local um, you know market that is frequented by local Kenyans uh, you know so Average Kenyans. Average Kenyans. Is the are the security forces overwhelmed, or what is it that is not working on the local scene? Actually, um, earlier on, I had a discussion with some secu top security uh, leaders in this country, and one of the things I advised them about was that actually this is a precursor to something big coming. When you see them targeting the average Kenyan, the common Monainchi, as we say here locally, the the you know regular Kenyan, um, this is actually a smoke screen to some big attack that they are, pre they are planning, like the Westgate style, like the Mumbai style, a big explosion, a big attack is coming, and it's going to target the upper market like Westgate. So all this they are doing is to distract security and to make everybody's concentration run to the, to the small you know, ends of the street and you know, try to watch over everything happening, and then we leave naked the bigger target. So I advised the security forces today, and I, I told the experts, please, while you run to, to watch over the common Monainchi, take your security and concentration on the bigger targets, the high-end targets like the embassies, the shopping malls, because they are trying to lure you out of the target so that they can hit the target, which will apparently have been left naked. And, and that brings us to the question of uh, several Western nations have issued travel advisories of, uh, to their nationals to, to leave the country, that perhaps there could be something of that uh, coming there. But what is it, though, that... Uh, Kenya is not in sync with regarding what exactly uh, development partners know and what Kenya knows regarding impending terror attacks? Actually, I would ask that question in the reverse. What do our development partners know and uh, uh, international community know that Kenya does not know? Now, what they need to realize, our international friends and partners, is that actually this map of extremism that is trying to find root in Kenya could soon reach their shores. And unless they can tell us what they know, Absolutely, it goes without, without saying that really they have more sophisticated technology, they have more sophisticated intelligence gathering machine, and they have more money to invest in intelligence. It's no wonder that really FBI can know things happening in Somalia more than Kenya can know. It's not funny that FBI could find things in this country that we ourselves don't even know. What FBI needs to know is that really, if they let those things happen in this country and tell Americans leave Kenya, tell Chinese leave Kenya, tell uh, uh, British or other people leave Kenya, what they are saying is 
you go home, and then the terrorists, when they are finished with Kenya, they'll follow you to your countries. Well, China hasn't actually told its citizens to leave Kenya, but uh, Britain, Australia, and France, the United States have asked their, uh, you know, uh, citizens to leave Kenya. But moving away from that, though, Kenya is clearly battling and, and, and trying to safeguard her territory and safeguard her own citizens from this, but has also insisted that the... Uh, Kenyan uh, forces inside Somalia will not leave that country anytime. So what is the balancing act here that Kenya has to play between leaving her forces inside Somalia, but at the same time safeguarding her citizens within its own borders? Exactly, and that's the question of strategy and tactic and, and, and change that, that war brings. When our, our pre sec uh, that president declared war against the Al-Shabaab, and we sent our troops in October 2012 to Somalia to pursue them, our country went into a state of war. His uh, successor, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, reaffirmed that position. So from the commander-in-chief's position, we are still in a state of war. Now, what we need to know, that war has two faces. It has offensive and defensive. Now, f uh, October 2011, we, we took the first one, which is offensive. We went right inside to get the enemy, and we've been doing it successfully with great results. But then the homeland security, the defensive position, what have we done? Have we invested the same amount of money, concentration, uh, uh, partnerships onto homeland security? My feeling is that actually we put more money onto the offensive part of this war than in the defensive part of this war. It's amazing to read in the papers today that the, the, the National Counterterrorism Counter Center has in the next budget been assigned 28 million shillings only. That's a big joke in a war like this. I, I expected to hear they have been given like uh, you know uh, several hundred millions to fight this. The ATPU, has been, the uh, Anti-Terrorism Police Unit, has been given more money to fight right. this. We need to improve our homeland security. That's the answer. All right, um, Biju and Mwendwa, thank you very much. And just to clarify that, that uh, it's the United States and France and Britain that have issued yes. travel advisories. We, we have and good in China Chinese has friends. not yet. They uh, haven't, and I know they will not. Thank you. And we leave it there for the moment uh, on that. But thank you very much for your analysis. Um, Biju Mwendwa, security and anti terrorism expert, there on the latest development in Kenya regarding a blast that has claimed 10 lives in our city market.